going on everyone for those who don't know me my name is blake ninja um i'm here out here on youtube and twitch i don't uh get on here often follower count has definitely died but um i definitely have something i want to say um is all the uh black lives matter controversy um going on uh after george floyd's death maude aubrey all the tragic uh, times that just constantly haven't you know been going on for the last hundreds plus years around the world um, but the George Floyd thing definitely it had a, a, a jump start moment and catalyst and a definitely a, I guess a look in the mirror for the whole world on this this systemic racism problem this police brutality problem um, and I just want to give an I already gave perspective um, earlier um, on my other channel, um, essentially just giving my personal experiences being a black man in America um, and what I've gone through personally, unfortunately, um, being pulled over by the cops walking on my campus, um, driving or walk, moving into my house, things like that. Um, but uh, something I mentioned in that video was um, how we were paying attention to all the companies that are saying things for the first time. They just, you know, they've never said anything before, and it's like, it's hard to determine if they're being genuine or they're just going with the, the time and the moment. And unfortunately, um, I have to speak on what I've seen in this industry that I love, uh, which is gaming. Um, I'm going to start with love first. Um, I am, a, I consider myself a gamer. Um, I've been playing video games since as long as I can remember since I'm, you know, since I was probably like three or four years old from the Sega Genesis that my older siblings had on to, um, the Game Boy Color and 64, um, that I should have up on screen. I, I mean, over time, I'm 28 years old now, level 28, what's up? Um, and in that time I've collected, I mean over the years between me and my siblings almost every system that has come out um it's a flex in a way um in another way it's uh it's something i'm very proud of and I, I plan to pass on to my kid um so i thought initially um um but with this collection i play these games i don't just collect them but you know i play them they're all mostly mine they're all used um, some i've bought off the internet um off like ebay and stuff um, just to, you know, most of my Nintendo ones are launched. I, I'd say if, if, if I did say anything gamer, I am a gamer, but I, I do have a, I've told people before I have a bias. I am a Nintendo boy, uh, since my Game Boy and, and Pokemon took me from, you know, I got in kindergarten, five years old, and it, it, you know, all my friends were playing it. It just, until it was banned in my school, it was one of the coolest things. And I still, uh, try my best to support it to this day. Um, I love gaming for what it does for uh, gamers. It allows us to escape reality sometimes and you know, cause reality can be very hard. And um, especially for a, a black man, because like I said, the world is kind of against you, unfortunately. And as a black boy growing up, say video games just gave me, like I said, it didn't, when I was younger, I didn't necessarily see the, the, the toxicity of racism as much um so gaming then was just an escape from you know getting in trouble from your parents and i feel like all of us can relate to that it wasn't until i you know you get older when you start or when when as i got older and online gaming became a thing and uh you know you start seeing these toxic chats and these toxic names all on the internet where you realize this it's it your escape I guess the escape for some people, unfortunately, is 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 hatred online, and um, it's it's really sick and it's sad to see, yeah. and and it's, so it's hard to express. We, you know, most black gamers we become numb to it because it's kind of being a black gamer is kind of niche because it's almost they kind of treat us like we don't exist, and therefore. Uh, I don't know, it feels like maybe our opinions don't matter. It's, we've become numb to like seeing the, the N-word using usernames and, and chat rooms and um, by kids online. 
um, kids of non-color, of course. Uh, I mean, it shouldn't be used. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I am a black gamer, and I've, I've, I can honestly say I've never put any N-word explicit on any of my gamer tags, any of the chats, anything that has, because I, I try to just keep it, like I said, I'm not trying to bring that energy. That's an energy of hatred, and I'm trying to escape that when I game. I'm trying to have a good time, I'm trying to, you know, see the world that these developers wanted to create. Um, and, I mean, that's also another problem that I, I will have to, you know, address later in this video. As I was saying, uh, being a black gamer is kind of niche because like I said we're not accepted per se by the black gaming community for the most part because uh, a lot of times um, our feelings are unheard. Like I so said, we have to become numb to the unsensitivity online and tournaments and things we see. Um, lack of development or lack of black developers, um, lack of black advertisement, um, all those types of things. And on top of that, it's like. I can honestly say that I know, like, growing up in school, that, like, our own community as black people are really supportive of a gamer community, or of, of gaming, and I want to say it may be because they see the lack of support. I just, I can, I do know that being a gamer in school, like I said, once past middle school, um, until, I mean, it's, it's changed in recent days when there's actually, you know, whole gaming schools and, and, uh, to train Fortnite players to do win millions of dollars, but when I was growing up, like I said, this was before esports was really a thing. So if you weren't really playing, you know, regular sports, which I did, I, I was an athlete in school as well. But I still, my teammates made fun of me for you know playing uh, video games as much as I did because I I did, you know, as much as I went to practice for hours throughout the day, I would be up at night when I got off uh, basketball, football practice, swim practice. I would be at home practicing. Uh, on fighting games, Tekken, Smash Bros, um, all those types of games, uh, strategy games, all that type of stuff. Um, as well, and it's like, you know, they were like, you know, why don't you, you know, spend your time doing other things that are more for us? And it's like, I didn't get it then, but I kind of get it now, because that was years ago, and I just have to admit that in that time, I can honestly say that the, it's not, it's been an increase in the amount of black support in gaming, but it's not, it's not significant, I would say, um, especially when you have um, situations like, um, like Fortnite, who, who's, you know, almost a, a billion dollar industry at this, a billion dollar game at this point, um, off of free interactions and buying emotes, who uh, unfortunately have profited, I want to say, off black culture when they take emotes and dances um, from us and then don't give back. Um, I don't know what, you know, what Epic has done towards <laughs> this cause, but I, ha I haven't seen anything personally. I know they're not paying um, the artists that make up these dances. Um, I've seen podcasts that refer to it. Shout out to Joe Button podcast, the JPP, and, and um, I've been seeing it I've mentioned in other forms of medium too, where it's like, they're making money off of something someone else made up. If it was another way around, there would be, you know, some type of copyright infringement or something like that. But I also understand that there is this, there is weird copyright stuff that comes with, I guess, creation of dancing versus intellectual IP. I don't want to get into it. All I know is they are one of the prime people who should be, you know, stepping forward uh, the most. Um, when you when you like I said when you're profiting off black culture it's kind of that you should see more like I said more developers more characters um, I saw uh, one of the journalists uh, black journalists that came on Inside Gaming um, a couple weeks ago when they were doing their week of having uh, black writers in gaming come on their platform and essentially um, give their feel of the day. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I really wish they would have kept it going. Um, but they are, you know, they're still keeping, I've noticed that the articles are still keeping the, the touch of uh, the Black Lives Matter as well because it has calmed down for the most part in the industry. Um, but beyond that, yeah, the initial post that I have, you know, in the background um, from Nintendo. Uh, 
But yeah, like I said, it's 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 needs quite said because you really like say you're not really accepted by your community you're trying to be a part of, and then you're not necessarily a community a part you know accepted by a community that you are a part of, um, and it just puts you in a really weird place, and um, it's uh, it and that's even you know like I said when it's all about cases and, and finding other people like that it's hard to find, um, I guess that that commonality with other people. Um, it makes you feel kind of isolated. Uh, but, you know, past that, I want to talk about, like I said, some of the things that I have concerns as far as, like I said, observing companies over the years, um, especially like my big boy back here, um, Nintendo. My main gripe, like I said, is the, I guess the company I am the biggest fan of. I told you guys my collection. Like I, said, I have all their, their systems and consoles. I have stock in the company. I'm a fan. Um... So this is coming, like I said, from a place of a fan, and it's this is really, it's really weird. Um, and I, like I said, I've been watching them over the years, all the Nintendo Directs, all the Nintendo Live Treehouses, and all those things. The lack of support for the F, uh, the F, FGC, and Smash, um, and it's just it was just really weird. Like I said, a lot of people noticed it that you know, like I said, a lot of companies stepped out of their comfort zone for the first time because this moment sparked pretty much a, the first international protest for black lives and their significance and that's the you know it's a first it usually it stays within the u.s but this is the first time all 50 states in a couple countries even japan um had a protest and um and a part of that makes me you know feel really good like i said a part of that makes me feel a little bit sketchy because like for the you know first time ever, Nintendo actually released a statement uh, concerning race, um, and um, well, no, not the first time. It's f concerning like the di direct black lives. Um, they had an issue. With, they've had multiple. Nintendo's had multiple issues, and it's kind of I guess when I'm calculating them all together, it's kind of hard to move under the rug when I see statements like this. Um, you know, they've had issues with. Like Game and Watch recently, who had to be patched. Um, he he had a certain silhouette that offended the Native American community, and they had to be they had to patch it out and release a statement on that. Um, they've had like I mean I love Pokemon. The Jinx is a the most one of the most the original color and form factor of Jinx is one of the most racist things. Um, unfortunately, to come out of Pokemon Company and Nintendo, um, and they had to you know change the entire color as time went on. Um, so when I, like I said, when I look at their history and like I said, I look at their advertising and I'm like, I'm looking, I'm looking now, I see the statement and it made me go look at their Instagram page and their social media and I'm looking, I'm like, I see prior black support at all. Um, and you know, it's, it's weird cause like, I understand that, you know, a lot of these gaming companies, they weren't political at first. Um. This is the first time for them, Andre, another YouTuber who, like, I, he is the epitome of what I'm talking about as far as being a black man in a culture that's kind of weird with how they accept you, um, because he loves the game culture, he loves the po the the Pokemon, the Power Rangers, all that stuff that's and honestly Asian Japan orient, or they, they, that's where they started, and there has you know they have a history of being kind of weird with how where they put us and how they treat us and um you know even the house introduced to black nerd gaming was kind of like channels were using andre back in the day to like kind of like hey we got you know we have support from black gamers and such but then i never saw them saw him on their channels ever again i've been saying this entire time black support was not present in gaming especially not from nintendo i mean we had reggie but I don't, and I even, like, that's the game that I've noticed that Nintendo plays, unfortunately. When I'm, like, looking at the Treehouse and um, a lot of their advertisements, they mostly all, like, like they kind of follow, everyone knows Nintendo for being very formulaic. It's what leads to their success, but it also is what is attributed to their flaws. And when I'm looking at the advertisements, I'm, like, I'm looking at even the Treehouse, they always kind of seem to do the formula of, white consumer, Asian consumer, 
and that's it. That's all, like, most of their advertisements, most of their Instagram posts, white consumer, Asian consumer, that's it. And it's like, the black consumer exists. I read an article that shows that of the, you know, we're only, unfortunately, 12, 13% of this country, but of in the black or in the community of gaming and purchasing, we take about 25% of fandom. So it's like, we should have more representation as we, you know, we, we, we consume almost a quarter as much as our, as everyone else. I mean, I mean, honestly, if, you, if we consume a quarter, that means the other quarter is probably the white gamers, the Asian gamers, and the, His, and the uh, Hispanic gamers. Um, so, and, and, and they, they, I guess you see, the, like I said, the advertisement and representation with all of them, not so much us. Um, and it's like, I, I hope that this message they're sending is, is definitely a call going forward. I hope for the message. It's, I see, you know, it's, you know, they released it on the day that everyone else did it. Um, the thing I got to point out though, that like really made me, cons I guess, disappointed is when Nintendo and Sony both had these scheduled scheduled announcements on the same exact day that before this this incident happened um sony's was going to be for their console launch for the playstation 5 which is a very big deal and nintendo was going to be for the information on the pokemon expansion which they had already kind of given us hints about but whatever um and when the George Floyd situation happened and everyone, you know, the companies all responded by like that Tuesday, the Blackout Tuesday, every company in the corporate America sent out something. And the ones that didn't, Steam, who, you know, is losing developers, uh, taking off, you know, because they didn't say anything and they're now losing developers as we speak. Uh, developers and gamings are being stripped off their platform um, because they said nothing. Everyone decided to say something or, you know, donate or blah, blah, blah. But so, companies like Sony, in my opinion, took it a step further because not only did they, you know, release a statement, but they actually canceled their event. They canceled their their launch PlayStation event. I mean, and, and it, I thought they were going to postpone it to a day, but they ended up moving it to the entire next week. I thought that maybe that was like a way to kind of probably save face and not put like, you know, something that while this... All this inf negative energy and information and healing is necessary, and they're putting out PS5s and saying, give us more money. Um, it would just have been tasteless, I suppose, to do it. So maybe they were just being smart in that aspect, and they canceled it. But at the same time, they also release statements, and then they end up do donating, like, I want to say seven figures to the causes and supports, which is wonderful that's how you, i feel like that's how you should have done it and when you look at that example and then you look at nintendo who just released this one statement like they have multiple social medias i only saw the statement on this instagram and it's weird because even this instagram their nintendo american instagram this is the one that has like lack of black support all over it they have another one which is their nintendo of new york account which is really weird because that account is nothing like it has nothing but like black smash players on it um and i don't i don't know what i guess message they're trying to portray but they actually didn't put the this message on that account um strangely enough they didn't put it like on all of them they just put it on the nintendo america account and i think that says something i think the fact that the donation um from the like the Pokemon company because essentially Sony canceled their event, but Pokemon company still did theirs. They still, despite all the controversies that are around Pokemon, like I love the series. I'm, I have all the games, <laughs> um, but I understand the controversies that go behind the series, and to 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 know what your that and to still continue with your event when like I said Sony canceled a a launch event, not a just a game event, but a launch event. It's kind of like what I was saying. It looks kind of distasteful. It's just, I, I was expecting Nintendo to also cancel theirs, but no, they continued forward. 
they, you know, Pokemon Company, because it was them who proceeded with the merch, I feel like they may have gotten some backlash because then they did eventually release a statement and talk about the donation they gave to the NAACP and Black Lives Matter, which is nice, but the amount is concerning because it's only $100,000 and they're essentially a billion dollar industry. Um, a billion dollar industry that honestly, like, they just released new news about more news about Pokemon today, like about like Niantic and Pokemon Go. I'm like, the microtransactions from that game alone, they could have gave one day, you know what I mean, of donations for microtransactions from that game to to give a worthy, you know, donation. A hundred, like I, I feel like I bought more than a hundred thousand dollars worth of games over time. That's ridiculous. Like, I I don't think that's enough, and it just it's just majorly disappointing. Um, it's uh, I I when I especially like I say when when I look at Sony when I look at other companies that you know they were like Apple Apple Arcade they were promoting games that were by black developers that had black characters, um, that were setting up donations and charities that went way over six figures. When you're like say a trillion dollar industry, I just it feel like that says volumes, and. I just feel like my company that I support needs to do better. Um, if they're, you know, if they're going to stand by the statement they put out for the first time ever, they need to encourage more black developers, black uh, hires in Nintendo's company, um, black faces on on Nintendo Treehouse. Um, I, I in, in any Nintendo sponsored events like the Smash event, I think the guy who looks like Tony Gonzalez is not going to work anymore. We need more of the TK Breezies, the EEs, uh, which they've done events before, but we need more like them. Um, we need more black players on the on the on the platforms like these. They the, the said Nintendo was just starting to mess with the F, the fighter game community, and but even then, like I said, the players they pick, it's kind of weird. Like, I need to see more of the Salem's. I need to see more of the Larry Lurs. I need to see more of, uh, that's my man who plays Mario. There's a, there's a lot of black gamers and they're not given the platform. It's really weird how they kind of pick the players that they do pick. Um, like Nairo and Zero, which are great, but they're not black and we need that representation as well. Um, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's essentially it. I just, if they're, I just want them to stand by the statement. They can't just donate six figures. Um, when they, like I said, I've probably paid more than that in, in Nintendo hardware. Um, I, <laughs> I, uh, Big Flex. Um, yeah, I, mean, I want, I, want I, I, I like I said, I'm a big fan of this company. I just want them to do better. I want the gaming industry in general to do better. I need more, like I said, the, the guy on that, that IG or on Inside Gaming, he, he hit a nail on the hammer. We need more black developers. We need more black characters. Like, the fact that there's not many black characters in games is concerning. I like this last series of Pokemon because they, they threw a bunch of black gym leaders in. The champion, he looks weird, and I don't really like his design. But, he you know, he they have the appearance of black. I wish... That they could be a little bit darker because they're on that that edge that Nintendo likes to play with, where I said so they'll throw some black person, like I said, like like that one commentator in there, but he looks like me, and it's on that border where it's like we I, we need clear distinction. Um, we need more black representation. The game that I love, like Smash, we need more black representation than that. Uh, more black characters. Um, if you don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to see, I guess, conversions of characters that are already existing. You know, I would love if Sam, you know, if Samus was black, if Captain Falcon was actually black, you know, that would have been great. But I understand, like, I understand original, I guess, ideas. So I would say to create more black players, I mean, more black characters, to encourage those black characters or black players <laughs> that y'all do hear us, y'all do care about us, and that our money is important because I, that's, I feel like essentially if enough of us see where this is, keeps going, <sighs> that 25% is going to be a lot less. Um, and that's just in general. In all industries. But I'm talking to the gaming industry in specific. So, 
that's all I wanted to say. I, um, like I said, I am looking forward to, to better results going forward. Um, my eyes will be open. Um, like I said, shout out to all the black gamers and black commentators and black journalists in gaming. I know it's mad tough um, in this industry. Um, like I said, when, it's, when you're not really supported by any, any direction you go. Um, and then, like I said, then when you get on, you know, we're online most of the time and you're just ridiculed by just crazy commentary um, and online stuff to where you become desensitized. And it's, it's really, I like I said, shout out to the mental health of it. It's, you know, it's real. I'm thinking about like Etika. It's, it, it, that's, it, it can get to that point. So shout out to you guys for staying strong. Um, and yeah, black gamers, gaming industry, we love you.